Hey guys, it's time for another easy open world build. Today's choice is Power Reaper, a build I've never covered before and after playing it for a bit I don't really know why. This build is based off the DPS build I made on the Guild Wars 2 wiki, so if you want to learn more about the basics of this build or double check some information, check out the written article or the complimentary video on the DPS rotation. The links are in the description below. As usual, for open world we'll follow a particular priority list for survivability changes, starting from the DPS build for instance content. Gear is expensive unless you have legendary gear, so we'll adjust food, skills and traits first. Through the access to Reaper Shroud, Reaper is pretty tanky on its own. However, if you want to solo harder content in open world, it can still make sense to make the build more forgiving so that you can sustain on your own. The first major step to increase survivability on Reaper is to use Staff as a secondary weapon. This gives you 1200 range on all your weapon skills and synergizes well with the kit of the build. Then in Soul Reaping, switch from Unyielding Blast to Soul Marks to gain life force on your Staff skills. Since we'll be losing access to vulnerability from Shroud skill 1, we'll also switch to Bitter Chill in Spite. This applies vulnerability whenever we apply shield, and we apply a lot of it. Second and probably the most impactful change is to use Blighter's Boon instead of Reaper's Onslaught. This will give you lots of life force outside of Shroud and health inside Shroud whenever you apply a boon to yourself. Blighter's Boon triggers on every stack of might you apply to yourself through the traits Reaper's Might, Siphon Power and Chilling Victory, and by using Fried Golden Dumpling Food, you apply loads and loads of Might to yourself, leading to massive healing and life force generation in and outside of Shroud, respectively. Since minions are very good distraction for enemies, we will use Rise to generate minions as a decoy. They will also absorb damage for you, which is awesome. This skill also does respectable damage in melee range. If those changes are not comfortable enough for you, you can use survivability food and a utility item for another minus 10% damage taken and 150 toughness. In an open world build it is helpful if you can cover all essential boons, offensive and defensive, on your own. In this build, Might is covered by Reaper's Might, the Fried Gold Dumpling, Siphon Power and Chilling Victory as explained before. By using Blighter's Boon we lose the quickness from Reaper's Onslaught, so we'll make use of Dread in Spite and use a Relic of the Chronomancer. The trait Dread triggers on Reaper's Mark and Terrify and covers both Fury and Quickness on you. It also recharges Infusing Terror by 50% every time you kill something while it is on cooldown, allowing you to spam it in Shroud for constant application of Quickness. To trigger the Relic of the Chronomancer we will use Well of Blood, Well of Darkness and Well of Suffering. They will grant you additional Quickness outside of Shroud. On top of those two, Chill to the Bone as the Elite skill covers additional Might, Fury, Quickness and Stability. If you want to cover even more boons, make use of Jade Protocols. These give 150 additional toughness, vitality, condition damage and power, as well as all boons aside from stability, resistance and resolution whenever you enter combat. These effects can be pre-stacked outside of combat by using an enchanted Snow Diamond Tonic repeatedly. The protection from this is another free massive gain to survivability. In open world you'll usually be dealing with incoming conditions and control effects by yourself. First off, Putrid Mark on Staff transfers conditions from you to enemies. Your heal skill Well of Blood is a light combo field. Using any finisher inside of it, like Grave Digger, Soul Spiral or Putrid Mark, will cleanse conditions. If you want a condition cleanse that's good for damage as well, you can use Suffer. This will also apply vulnerability via the trait Bitter Chill. A more defensive option is Spectral Armor. This gives you some protection and a stun break as well as life force whenever you take damage while it is active. The skill I like to use for general roaming is Spectral Walk. This is a stun break and cleanses conditions over its duration, so it does both. It also allows you to cover swiftness on yourself in general roaming, making you move faster. Finally, You Are All Weaklings is another stun break that applies lots of might, giving you either life force or health via Blighter's Boon. In general, you'll want to alternate between Staff and Shroud, casting your wells, chill to the bone and Staff skills on cooldown. In Shroud, make use of Shroud 3 to either reduce the damage in Shroud or apply Fear for additional quickness if you press the second cast. If you kill loads of enemies, Shroud 3 will recharge on the fly, enabling you to reapply Fear and gain even more quickness. Shroud 4 and 5 deal great damage too. Shroud 2 can be used to cover ground. That way, you will only be vulnerable outside of Shroud, but even against a single target, you accumulate life force so fast that you can re-enter Shroud on cooldown with full life force. You deal great damage, become very hard to kill and you don't even need to change gear aside from the relic. Now that's it for today, feel free to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm, I hope this video was insightful for you and made you want to try Power Reaper. See you next time and a happy soul reaping!